Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town, and today I will be illustrating a normal day in my life as a freelance artist. First, a quick shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Storyblocks. Storyblocks is an ever-growing library of beautiful 4K video, professional-grade templates, transitions, and motion graphics backgrounds, all copyright-free so that you can use them in your own projects without fear of copyright strikes. With their unlimited video plan, you can download as much as you like, and everything that you download, even after your subscription runs out, is yours to keep and use forever. Personally, I'm kind of obsessed with their ink transitions. I think that they're just completely mesmerizing. I even used them in a video recently. Check it out. Check the link in the description for more information about Storyblocks video, and thank you so much to Storyblocks for supporting the channel. So my morning starts a little bit later than a lot of people's probably. Um, since I work from home and I work on my own sort of schedule, I tend to wake up around 10 a.m. I don't use an alarm, and so sometimes it's later and sometimes it's earlier, um, but generally I just like to wake her up, up around that time. I don't want it to go much farther than that because otherwise I will turn full nocturnal. Honestly, I feel like I my body wants to be sleeping during the day and awake during the night, so I kind of have to fight against that. But but um, I definitely don't get up at 8 or anything because honestly it's just mostly that I don't have to and I hate waking up early um, so I usually wake up around 10 a.m. Um, the first thing I do is I get on my phone and I check to make sure that there's no like emergency messages or really like important emails or anything that I have to deal with right away and if there's nothing like that then I usually just sort of scroll around letting that blue light get into my eyes and I also check YouTube to see what everybody's uploading I don't always have time to watch all of the videos of the people I'm subscribed to, but I like to sort of know what everyone's up to. Um, and then once I'm feeling a bit more awake, it's time to actually get out of bed and start doing stuff. Obviously I do all the boring stuff like brushing my teeth, washing my face, blah, blah, blah. Then I go downstairs and check on my pets. I recommend for anyone who's working from home to take care of your animals or you know anyone who's depending on you even if that's like a plant uh, first thing in the morning so that if you get caught up with work uh, they have been at least um, sort of attended to and not too neglected. Um, so I have two pet rats named Parsnip and Clove and I've had them for about like six months now. Um, generally what I do to take care of them every morning is I uh, wipe down the levels of their cage with some hot water and a paper towel unless it's like a big cage cleaning day but I usually do that on weekends um, just to make sure that they have a clean space to uh, play around in for the day. I also pour out their old water into my watering can and fill it up with fresh water and I refill their food bowl. Sometimes I also put like salad into their little treat uh, ball that they have in their cage just so that they have some nice fresh food um, first thing in the morning and I try to play with them around this time depending on how much work I have to do in the day if I'm really busy um, I'll just hold them for a minute or let them run around in their play area um, but if I have more time I'll like get some tea or a drink or something and uh, let them run around on the couch and on my lap uh, while I like watch a show or something before I get up to work kind of just depends on how much I have to do lately I've been really busy so I haven't been able to do that with them as much um, but it is something that I really like to do when I start out with my day um, and I highly recommend finding little things like that if you're someone who works from home it can be very difficult to stop working or do things that are not uh, your work so um, I recommend having like little rituals that are like away from your office um, I just find it really makes your day feel more full of different types of things and not just drawing all day once all that sort of housework stuff is done, like watering the plants, taking care of the rats, and like basic cleaning stuff, now it's time to actually get to the work of the day. So I go upstairs into my um, studio. Um, I've shown you guys a tour of that. If you want to take a look, I'll leave a link uh, probably up in the upper corner of this video. Um, but uh, it's basically where I do almost all of my work. Sometimes I record on my iPad instead, and then I can sort of move around to wherever. But typically, if I'm working on videos or my comic, or really anything to do with drawing, I'm usually up here in this office. Um, it's also the only place where I edit videos, so that's the other reason I'm always up here. Um, but before I get drawing, what I like to do is sit down, respond to emails. Um, so I get a ton of emails every day. Uh, I try to respond to all the ones that I can. 
If you guys want a rough sort of estimate about the types of emails I get, usually it's one to two different um, off-brand tablet companies offering to send me drawing tablets. Um, they pretty much do that to any drawing channel. Um, and basically what they want is for you to make a video promoting their product um, if they send it to you. A lot of the times they won't even send them to you unless you promise that you will give it a good review. Um, so I pretty much ignore those. Um, they're very persistent, so I get them all the time. Uh, then if I'm lucky, there's some good sponsorship um, sort of emails coming in. Um, and then I try to see if I can set those up and if the, you know, the sponsor is one that I want to associate with. And if you guys aren't as like social media and YouTube focused in your freelance art career, this is also probably where you will get most of your commission information. Um, I don't do commissions anymore, but I used to get a lot of emails about that when I did do them. I usually kind of try to rush through my emails because this, this like scheduling and paperworky stuff is kind of my least favorite part of the job, though it is a really important part of it if you're going to be your own boss and be a freelancer. Once that's finished, I like to go into my schedules and planners and write down what I need to do for the day. Again, this is one of those things that I highly recommend if you're working um, and being your own boss. Um, so that's anything from like a YouTube channel, running your own comic, um, anything self-published, uh, any project, you know, that you kind of have to try to, um, you know, control control yourself, you know, like make sure that you're meeting deadlines because like no, you don't have a boss that's like emailing you being like, I want that on my desk on Monday. Like you have to be the one saying that you want it on your desk by Monday. So that's when I take my little schedules out. I have two of them. I actually have three, um, but <laughs> uh, I typically use these two. One is sort of a to-do list and one is more of a long form planner. And I like to write down what I need to do in both. And once I'm done setting my schedule and responding to emails, it's usually time for lunch. I pretty much always skip breakfast, so lunch is always an exciting time because I'm usually pretty hungry by this point. One bad habit I've picked up from working at home is that I always want to go out to eat because I want a reason to go outside. Um, and uh, usually I try to use meals as an excuse to go out and about in the world because uh, otherwise I pretty much do everything at home and that can be kind of boring. Um, but on this particular day, we just got some takeaway food from the grocery store because we had to pick up some groceries. Um, exciting, I know. Um, and I just got like a little kale salad and some veggie roll sushi and a little like curry tofu. I don't always eat this healthy. I drew a bunch of my favorite foods around on this slide so that you guys would have a better idea of what I'm generally eating. But yeah, lunch is one of my favorite times. It's just a time that I get to relax a bit and um, eat something tasty before I have to get to the real work of the day. So depending on the day, I'm doing different things. Um, on Mondays, I usually like to dedicate that whole day to my webcomic. Um, so that involves a lot of writing and a lot of drawing. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, I usually like to be drawing for my videos, and then on uh, Wednesdays and Fridays, I like to be editing and voicing over for my videos. So that way I can have some work done on my webcomic and two videos done every week. Now, there has been a wrench thrown into that schedule lately because I have a really massive vacation coming up and I've been frantically trying to get videos um, done uh, so that I have a backlog so I don't have to try to work on airplanes and in hotel rooms and stuff. Um, but usually most of the year that is what my schedule looks like um, so the dream is to have an update for unfamiliar my webcomic every single week as well as two videos um, that's usually not what happens but that is what I aim for every single time usually what ends up getting um, neglected is the webcomic just because it isn't my primary source of income YouTube is um, but that's kind of one of the things that you have to try and deal with if you're a freelancer um, you're usually going to be balancing multiple different types of income and you have to decide which one you're going to pursue the most. Um, it's really painful for me because I love YouTube and I love my webcomic equally and it sucks to have to choose one over the other all the time. Um, so I try to usually balance it week to week which one's going to get sort of neglected more and um, so over the year hopefully it ends up being roughly even. Um, but that's just something as a professional artist that you kind of have to uh, figure out on your own um, so that you can survive and also make sure that your passion projects aren't being neglected so um, that's one of the most difficult parts of this job I would say because it's all in your hands right you're the uh, sort of master of your own destiny so you really have to think about things carefully and make sure that you're making the right choice for both yourself and your career 
So after about five or six hours of work, it is time for dinner. I usually eat dinner around six o'clock-ish. Um, so for dinner, again, I usually like to go out, but there are a few things that I'm good at cooking. And on this particular day, my enhanced ramen was the thing that we ate. Um, basically, it's just instant ramen with a whole bunch of different stuff in it to make it both look better um, and also taste better and be healthier for you. It turned out pretty good, but we were out of chili oil, so it wasn't very spicy. After dinner, I would like to be playing games, watching movies, and doing stuff like that, but a lot of the time I'm having to go back up to my office and work pretty much indefinitely until it's time to go to sleep. Um, on a good day, uh, I got all my work done, and usually I like to watch some movies or play some games. Lately, I've been really into um, Tetris 99. But realistically, usually I'm just working. Um, I tend to work from after dinner until about 2 to 5 a.m. Um, it really depends on how frantically busy I am. I don't like to push it to 5 very often because that's way outside of a normal sleep schedule and usually the sun is coming up a little bit. Um, that usually only happens when, like right now, uh, I have you know vacations or something that are coming up that's disrupting my usual schedule. You can tell when I'm doing voiceover at one of these super late sessions because it will sound unusually ASMR-like. Um, anytime that you've heard a video of mine and you've been like, wow, she's really, really um, talking very softly, that's usually when I'm you know, doing voiceover at like 4 or 5 a.m. Just because I'm trying not to be noisy and also because when I get sleepy, my voice gets really like whispery and low like that. Um, so uh, in case you were ever wondering why my voice tends to fluctuate, um, oftentimes it's about what time I'm doing my voiceover. Over. So yeah, that's basically what my normal day-to-day -day work schedule is like um, as a freelance artist. Um, I was a little apprehensive about doing this video at first because I'm not a studio artist and I thought uh, maybe my my lifestyle is a little too unusual um, to be uh, interesting or valuable um, for you guys. But then I realized that actually a lot of artists do sort of work from home, freelance, a variety of different things and have to sort of manage their own schedules and stuff. So I thought maybe it would be sort of interesting or useful to you guys if that's something that maybe you're hoping to do with your life. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed watching me draw my day um, and all the little clips of uh, the stuff that I do and I hope it wasn't too boring. If you have any questions about like my day-to-day life, um, I'll try and answer them, um, particularly in like the first day of posting the video. I'll be in the comments answering questions, uh, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much to my wonderful patrons, including Bella Story, Kampapunk, Clockwork Construct, Dope Elephant Art, Dr. Casket, Larry, Elizabeth Album, Feno, Greer the Animator, Hachiubi, Yara Famoso, Imagine Creation, Ivan Rodriguez, JJJ, Joseph Kopel, Drunk on Insomnia, Carla Tapia, Le Blah Blah Blah, McKenna Lewis, Megan, Mike Adactyl, Mr. Dr. Pants, Nora Cornelson, Okamore, Ollie, Piku Perkla, Rosie Warlock, Rudy, Scott Steffes, Sergeant Pendulum, The Artsy Moose, Throat Foam, Yaboyas T, Zoe Stardust, and Maga.